Let's get started for your patience. We have started already, and now that the technology is fixed, things are going to go smoothly. Let's see where we are in terms of the slides. So we have motivated on the board already the Schrodinger equation. Now the thing I didn't write on the board is I wrote E instead of H. What's the difference? Anybody? Hamiltonian. That's the Hamiltonian, and it is the Hamiltonian operator. Yeah, you see, you get to the little more than when you get the operator named after you. So the Hamiltonian operator is T, the kinetic energy, plus V, the potential energy. So it really specifies energy in this case. So energy is more general, but the Hamiltonian operator um, gives the energy as the sum of kinetic and potential energy. So we can, for our purposes, interchange H and E. Is that okay? When we are dealing with just mechanical energy. So here we are. And for your homework too, due today, we are, I already answered questions. Quiz two graded and returned, right? And then homework one graded. So check. We will do more workouts on the board. And I pointed out some resources in the syllabus where you can consult for extra mathematical details to polish your tools. And when I say thank you, I really mean it there because <laughs> I'm not taking things for granted. So far, this is going on really well. Okay? You are doing your part very well. Working together, I've seen many of you do the homework together. That's how to do it. That's how to do it. And you're coming to my office for help, and that's really, that makes me very happy answering those questions. And you're participating fully in class, so you're making me enjoy teaching, and that's why I'm grateful. Yeah. You can see even in what we are doing so far, there's a lot of work achieved, especially when I look at your eyes. And in spite of the masks, a lot of smiles. So let's keep doing that, okay? Thank you. So for today, Schrodinger equation, the main idea is to take, to look for a wave function that becomes a solution of the Schrodinger equation. A wave function that contains Information that we want, information about the particle's dynamical variables, such as position, momentum, etc. And we can actually start to build the Schrodinger equation from possibly good wave functions, which is what we did on the board, and I'll recap it really quickly so that we can go into some details from the book as well. So let's continue with the board and then back to the class exercise all right <clears throat> we really have part of it when we started but i'll do a very quick recap for record purposes when you watch the video in preparation for your exam yeah. <clears throat> So, do you mind making it larger so people can see it when they are reviewing? Right? Oh, good. So, I can determine where we are. And we, I wouldn't talk much, I will just put down what we will just work out together shortly. Then we can tell. Yes. So today is Schrodinger equation. What number was it? Seventeen. Yeah. So we just did seventeen, where we started with a wave function. So we said psi equals a e i k x minus omega t plane wave if there is any equation that is going to be a good quantum mechanical wave equation it should solve things like this and give us 
desired quantities. And we tried it. We said partial psi, partial t gives us what? I omega, negative I omega psi, which we immediately saw that if we multiply by I h bar and I h bar here, we get what? H bar omega psi, which is energy, if you like. Wow, good. We did more. We quickly went into trying partial psi, partial x for that wave function. What did we get? I k psi. And we go further and say, well, negative i h bar, multiplying it, what do we end up with? H bar k psi, which is momentum. And that was when we began to talk about the momentum operator, the energy operator, So this thing is that momentum of crypto. You recall part of the quiz two? See the and if I had bad DD sign, it would produce momentum. Yeah? So wow, things are coming together nicely. Another one. Let's do partial psi, partial, partial squared psi, partial x squared on the plane wave, plane wave. What do we get, please? So, negative i, no, i k squared, thank you, i k squared psi. And if we look at it very well and multiply it by negative h bar squared over 2m, that allows us, so negative h bar squared over 2m, that allows us immediately to get h bar squared, yeah? What else? h bar squared, k squared, over 2m, sorry. And this is kinetic energy. So, tying this together, we see nicely that the Schrodinger equation actually is an expression of conservation of energy. Can I do it on the top? Yeah? Can I do the conclusion on the top? Yes. So, up here we conclude tying together for the plane wave that I h bar partial psi partial t equals, let's do the way we did, so it's easy to kind of remember. We showed that this ends up giving us energy, yeah, psi t, and in the middle we say, hey, let's take this one, and then it equals to 2m. Partial squared, partial x squared sorry. That one there, which gives us what? Kinetic energy plus any general potential energy. That makes sense. Is that how Schrodinger did it? derived it? Something like that, but much more tedious trials and all that, all that, all that. A lot of work. And if you think it wasn't a lot of work, then <laughs> think about it because he got the Nobel Prize in the 1930s for this. Because he explained so many experiments that could not be explained. So let's go further. Can I then go wipe this? Because I think this is most visible. Let's go further into your reading, chapter 2.1 of our book. Very good book to read. And I'll be slower now. You've seen that last part twice. So 18. What's going on? Our aim is to end up deriving or showing the time-dependent Schrodinger equation. We're going to do that by what our book nicely calls the physicist's first line of attack on any partial differential equation. We just saw the equation, 
the time dependent Schrodinger equation. So our aim then is to use the method of separation of variables. When I learned this many years ago, it used to be called variable separable. It's not like new form. <laughs> variable separable. Let's do variable separable. So this is the first line of account. So what is it? It's going to be applied again on the time dependent Schrodinger equation. And for clarity, I keep writing it explicitly showing both the time dependence and the Position dependence. So negative h bar squared over 2m partial squared partial x squared psi of x plus v of x psi of x. Yes. What's going on then? We say for separable solutions to so this time dependent Schrodinger equation. Yeah? We can write this psi of x, comma t as a product of the space dependent part, position dependent little psi. Can anybody distinguish between my full psi and it? Yeah, thank you. And phi of t, so separable, variable separable. See what we're doing? Okay. So, having written it that way, let's quickly do time derivative of the full psi of x comma t. What do you get? Do it yourself and tell me. Full time derivative on this. What do we get, please? Anybody, please? This is little okay. psi phi by t. Yeah, I like to bring, yes, I will agree. I like to bring the constant yeah, the one that is independent of time out there. What else, please? Next. Minus partial, partial t of the phi. Of the phi, right? Or phi. Some people call phi, some people phi. Are you sure it is still partial? Oh, Aha, uh -huh. that's why we are doing this together. After you read, now I make this right. Why is it then full time derivative? Because it is operating on a function that is only a function, that is a function of time alone. So full derivative. That's important. How about we do similarly? So similarly, partial psi, partial x. So when I say psi, it is the full psi. What's that going to give us, please? Or we can just do it faster and do partial squared, since that's what we want. Yeah? We need it. So what is that on this product, this function that is, can you not give us, please? It's now position. Please, maybe. So just take partial squared, partial x squared on this. Do you see what I mean? It's going to be phi of t times, yes, phi of t times d squared over dx squared of uh, little psi. Correct. You mean this one, right? Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Not the partial. Not partial. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Alan. Oh, sorry. That's Joker. Yeah. yeah. What is all this leading us to? We can now rewrite the Schrodinger equation in terms of this function, what we just did here. So let's do that. So step four, I h bar, right? What is phi? 
Good question. The fee is this time dependent on. What we did here, so let me put it in blue. Now that I got the question. What we did was to claim that a solution to the Schrodinger equation can be written as a product of a position dependent function and a time dependent function. And this is a standard way of separating variables. Oh, is that phi right there? It's just that's not the a wave function. That's that's not psi, that's phi. Which one? T, the inside the blue box. Okay, I thought that was also psi. It was just written differently. Well, here is one function, yeah. which could be separated into two. This function has two variables, depends on two variables, position and time. And now we separate it into two functions that depend on position. One depends entirely on position, the other depends entirely on time. Good question. It makes the solution, or it makes handling the differential equation easier. But like the book said, it is a restriction on psi. Is it a good restriction? It can be a poor restriction. It's possible. But quantum mechanics turns out to be a good one because any solution, any other solution outside those that could be separated this way can be expressed as a linear combination of this. And you will hear me say this again and again and again. And you will see what that means. It's a powerful statement. Any solution at all can be expressed as a linear combination of this. That's why this is important. So let's complete that. Um, I H bar partial. This guy can now be written this way, okay? Phi of x, sorry, psi of x. Are we together? A phi, I'm now calling it as you call it. What do you prefer, phi or phi? I don't know. Then psi. I agree. Yes, instead of psi and phi. Yeah, the sound. The alliteration is beautiful, but can be confusing, <laughs> right? <laughs> I agree. We got our own way of calling things. Nice. So, d phi dt equals, we are re rewriting Schrodinger equation in terms of this separable solution. So, we did the main work, negative h plus squared over 2n. So what is partial squared, partial x squared? That, what does it give us? We did the work right there. Can you see it? Yeah, so can I just take it and put it in there? Can I? Yeah. <laughs> okay, thank you. So, um, phi of t, full derivative d psi dx. Each time I ask you guys what we should do, you gave me good ideas I didn't think of. Yeah? Like phi and psi. That's a good one. And what will be what will follow V? The, the little phi and the little this five. One. Yeah. See why to now be of X and phi of T. Yes. So we've rewritten it, and we can complete the separation of variables by doing a few things to it. So you're going to do that quickly now. Divide for me, please, every term by the blue thing, and tell me the, so the, the result. So phi of t and psi of x. So just divide everything and tell me what you get. Yeah, divided by psi of x and phi of t. Same thing here. So 1 over phi of t and psi of x. So you tell me what you get finally. I'm going to clean the top part of the board while you are working on it. So we'll write it that way.
So what do you get? Our step five. Now that we've separated a little bit, we get I hit dry. Anybody to tell me? So this one cancels. One over. You notice that we divided everything, every term, by the wave function. And you'll soon see why. Are we together, please? All right. So what do you get for the first term? Dividing by the... You get one over phi. One over phi, thank you, of t, times? D phi dt. D phi dt. D phi of t dt. Good. And that should be equal to, yeah, I can actually clean that because I need more space. That should be equal to what, please? Over here. What else? So phi goes away, right? And one over what? Psi of x, the position only. And what else, please? So, d squared psi of x only, dx squared, plus what, please? G -B. Plus b. Thank you. Wow. Here is where I was hoping we get to, as we do, no matter what. Here is the argument. Look, you are claiming that a function that is totally dependent only on time is equal to another function that is totally dependent only on position. And we are doing, we should, we are correcting how we got here. And here is the nice argument. The only way this can be true, this equality can be true, is if this expression that is completely time dependent is a constant, which we can call anything Simple. But for purposes, we know why <laughs> we yeah. call it E, right? <laughs> and it means this too must be that constant. And the only to make that possible, we make V only a function of position. Let's pause to think of what that means. Or to answer questions if you have any. Any questions? Does this make sense? Could you also say that like the only way to make that possible is if the right side was equal to constant and then you could have a, a position independent time or Schrodinger equation? I'm not sure how useful it would be, but so what does saying that this whole thing is a constant and this whole thing is a constant? I'm not sure. So you are saying it's the constant. Oh, they're both constant. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. You got it now. Yeah. So they both said the left side, the only way the left side is equal to the right side in that equation, please, what did you call it? Thank you. The only way this is equal to this is if this is a constant and that is a constant. Does that make sense? Yes. So the book said, and I decided to write it a bit differently. Yeah. This is a constant, this is a constant, yeah, good. So, your question is good, because <laughs> claiming that each is a constant just means E is our letter for this constant. How about we make it F? <laughs> it's also a constant, right? But then there is an equality. E equals F, right? So we can put E. Are we okay now? Yes, so, so to keep things simple because they are, why this argument makes perfect sense is that listen, if we change time, this guy on the left can be changing, right? Because it's a function of time. 
But if this equality is to hold, which we should, then this guy must also be changing at the same rate. And for that to happen, it means this whole thing is a constant. It's not changing in time, whatever you're doing overall. And this whole thing is a constant, not changing in time. Because they are independent variables. It's a good argument. And so it allows us to arrive at the time independent Schrodinger equation. Do you see that this is the time independent Schrodinger equation? If we just multiply. Okay, so we agree that the whole thing is P, right? That's what we say. Just now. So, wow. The silence is profound. The silence means appreciation. You appreciate what you're seeing. <laughs> I can see that. So let's write it explicitly. We are claiming now that h bar squared over 2n, yeah, 1 over psi d squared psi of x, dx squared plus v of x equals e. That's what we are claiming. And all that is left for us is to multiply both sides by and we get the time independent Schrodinger equation. Is that okay? So we multiply by psi and this guy goes away. Can you see that? Good. So negative h bar squared over 2n. And then this guy fixes psi of x and e psi. That's where I wanted us to get to. And if you want us to add a little extra, we can now solve them independently. We have now obtained the time independent Schrodinger equation, which we can solve for any potential. That's what we'll be doing next week. We can also solve this immediately, independently, the time dependent part. Anybody that read can then take a big kudos from me. What's the solution to this left hand side equation? We're done with time independent Schrodinger equation. And let's let somebody take the last kudos for today by giving me the solution to this one. Because we said that we need to specify the potential. So the potential energy can be maybe an infinite square well, a step function. We're going to do all that. Oh, 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 a big O. Oh. Hydrogen atom. <laughs> this is a potential energy attracting the electron. <laughs> so how about this guy over here? Can anybody just solve it by looking? So my question is, you can solve it just by looking. Equals one. You've seen this before, you've solved it before, you've solved several equations like this. What will it be? Yep, that's it. Easy, because all it takes is multiply this over there, right? And you've got d phi dt equals itself there, yeah? This is an exponential function. The energy goes to h bar, yeah? Which is the same as e to the negative i omega t, yeah? Because omega is e over h bar. Yep. In fact, that allows us, since I'm getting so much attention from you guys, I mean, <laughs> let's say that what we expressed this way as psi of x and phi of t 
then becomes whatever we find by solving the time the independent Schrodinger equation, and we tap on this guy, the phase factor. We put over the time dependence there. Wow, that's what we'll be doing for the next two or three weeks. The full solution, we put the time dependence in that phase factor. And for this joke of it, <laughs> who remembers what the book calls this the funny thing that somebody gave that factor, that phase factor. It's actually a footnote in our book. <laughs> a footnote. Anybody? I'm giving it now. See? Oh, the wiggle factor. The wiggle factor. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. One minute break for that. <laughs> the wiggle factor. <laughs> yeah. The wiggle factor. So back to the slides, please. Thank you, Joey. The wiggle factor. So Joey got then the Honestly, I'm still wondering why is why you guys are so attentive. It's super. Can you tell me your secret so that I can reproduce it in another class? What's a secret? You guys are just good. <laughs> yeah, so keep it up. So let's do this exercise gently together, okay? You see what we have? What will that expression be? Integral, okay, one of us square root of two pi, right? Integral, g of k, yeah? something like this. So, ah, okay. So do the same thing we did on the board, partial psi partial t of our psi, full psi. Yeah, go for it. Right. <laughs> Are you tired a little bit? It's a class exercise. The only new thing there is just one over two pi and then the integral. We did it on the board for e to the i k x minus omega t. So now you do it for something more reasonable. A wave packet, not just a plain wave, okay? Yes, ma'am. Oh, good. So, starting with a general expression for the Gaussian wave packet. Derive a wave equation. So I'm asking you to derive Schrodinger's equation. Just as we did for a plane wave together twice on the board, you remember? Do the same here for a wave packet. <laughs> Walk together, please. Yes, it's there. Correct. What? I don't know. 
That's when after you have taken the derivative. How do you take a derivative of a function like this if this whole thing is the wave? So the dk, yes, the k part doesn't matter. Because you're not taking a derivative of either thing with regards to k. So those are just having the derivative of a function. Partial side, partial t. Will only operate on anything that contains t. That's what we did on the board. Yeah. Oh, wait. Never Mm -hmm. and then I'll go to the uh, like uh, the so so like the 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 yeah. Okay. So we just repeat the wave function again. Yeah. 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 Yeah, this is good. This is correct. Yeah. Notice that if you then multiply this by IH bar, you then get your energy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. How are you doing? Good. I'm still just working through uh, the weight function as a function of time. Mm -hmm. Yes. Keep going. Yeah, I'm doing the same thing. Sure, sure. Keep going. We've got time. Yeah. I'm got time. Are you Oh, it was the Yeah. Uh, question. So, you, so, this is, I wish I had your handwriting. Oh, right. That's okay. <laughs> yeah. So, this is, because this, this isn't a function of k. So, I just pulled it out because it doesn't make any sense. And you've kept everything. <laughs> That's why you would say that this is what you didn't know. I think you just leave the integral actually there. this function times. No, I did it Why would they just go away again? Never mind. I'm just good, good. Yeah. It's not doing well. Yeah, I'm sorry. Multiply both sides by both sides by I should do it. You can just get rid of the negative part here. Yeah, you're just following the same. Oh, wait. Oh, that's good. So, and essentially, you're keeping it in terms of a zero. Yeah. What's actually happening with it, but all that changes is your functions with regards to energy, momentum, and uh, kinetic energy just have scaling factors on them. Yes. Okay. That's the cool thing about that's well, what the equation helps you do. It helps you work on a wave function. That yeah, that's basically just negative omega times size. That's how to derive that equation. All right, so I've seen that you guys are doing well. See what you got. That's what you got, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah? Yeah. You then only had this pulled out and you repeated the wave function. And if we now multiply this by IH bar, what do we get? Yeah. We get omega H bar. We get energy. Yeah. So it's a good wave function. Just like our plane wave, the Gaussian wave packet will work. Are you getting it now? It's a good. So we are now trying the Schrodinger equation on various wave functions that we know something about such that if it gets more complicated, we can trust that the Schrodinger equation will spit out the correct wave function for us. <laughs> Any further question? Okay, so let's do the next part. Something we did on the board, but I wanted you to apply it to the Gaussian wave packet and see that it is another good one. So yeah, all it does you is... You want to go back to the almost the exact same thing. thing. Yes. Okay, that's so weird. It's, <laughs> it's not as bad as you thought, no, right? No, not at all. It's just, it's just like I would not have thought it was that like the same thing. So. Yes, 
but it is doing it on these ideal wave functions that we know something about. Yeah. And if it does what we expect it to do and spits out energy, spits out momentum, then maybe the weird, the real stuff you are looking for, it will do the right thing. Yes. And the real stuff you are looking for, let's end the class there. The real stuff you are looking for is something like psi equals a e to negative r over a. What might that be? Wave function for hydrogen atom. <laughs> Does that make sense? If it is producing expected results for stuff we know, and might produce expected results for wave functions we do not know much about. Let me see the time. We have two more minutes. You get there? So this is a good expression for a free particle, a particle that is not in any external potential energy. So a particle whose full energy, H bar omega, total energy is just there. It's just there. Can anybody complete it for me? A free particle is a particle whose full energy is just there. Kinetic energy. Kinetic energy. <laughs> and a, a, way, a Gaussian wave oh, packet uh, is a good wave three, function two. for oh, a free particle. Yeah. We explained that last time. Is it making sense? It just means that the potential energy is zero. And the Schrodinger equation works for this Gaussian wave packet, which represents a wave function, or which represents a free particle. And from next week, our V, the potential energy will not be zero. In one case, it will be infinite. <laughs> Then we start going into steps of potential energy function, different depths, infinite square well, then finite square well. You heard all that before. That's, so the rest is just solving for those various potentials, getting these solutions. Thank you. See you next week.